Hello people of the internet, welcome to episode 41 of Paint to Life, the YouTube channel where we take tiny plastic miniatures, throw some acrylic paint on them, and breathe life into them with storytelling, so you might learn something new on the subject, or perhaps find some new ideas to make your own. If you find yourself enjoying my original storytelling, please click subscribe and like the videos, leave comments below, I really appreciate it, it helps the channel grow. Share them with your friends. I'm GMA Tank, it's Christmas Day, let's get painting. Alright, last week on the channel we painted the Warren Christmas Village gingerbread gang and watched them take up arms against the dangerous villain Santa Claus to protect all of cookie kind. If you missed it, you can click on the link here to check it out at the or at the end of the video in the description below. My daughter actually whipped this up using the Sculpey oven baked clay, a tiny little gingerbread <laughs> figure. Great work, Claire. So as I had mentioned previously, I was involved in a Secret Santa gift exchange, and my Secret Santa was Alex over at Frog Lane Studios. So a couple weeks ago, I received a package from the United Kingdom from Alex, and it came with this letter. Dear Mike, you're a pretty good bloke, and I think paint to life is the bee's knees. Have a gander at this orc captain bust I've painted for you as a Christmas gift. Maybe you can take it to the next level with your storytelling. Your number one fan, Alex. That's not quite the letter he sent, but I imagine that's what the letter would have sounded like. Now, I've seen Alex's work on YouTube and Instagram, and I must say, the piece that he painted was absolutely something. So yeah, I've whipped together a story to share with you and for Alex as well, and anyone else watching from uh, Frogland Studios. Uh, this is the Orc Captain. The Beauty of Dawn was one of the most elusive and infamous pirate vessels along the Sword Coast. Captained by a cunning and elusive orc named Urag Gro Klang, who had been born into slavery in the distant kingdom of Vesperan and recently liberated when the Great Orc Uprising with Queen Octavia had taken place. Now, having worked in fishing vessels his entire life as a slave, Ureg was a natural on the water. Uh, he took to the sea and started preying on some Sembian vessels who had been taking advantage of the fact that there had been no piracy for a long time in the area, and they were kind of weakened as a result of it. Easy pickings. Now, that should have relegated Ureg's story into relative obscurity, undoubtedly dying a violent death, maybe at the hands of an enemy or perhaps one of his own crew, were it not for a chance encounter with a vessel from the far desert kingdom of Kalimshan, which was quite rare for being so far inland as Kalimshan is um, you know, a coastal city and country. Now this ship was empowered by an Ifrit, which is a fire type genie, very evil. And despite that, due to the unfamiliar nature of the territory and the fact that Urag and his crew were quite experienced pirates, the Kalimshits were defeated. Now Ureg was going to ship the, the ship the vessel. Really? Now Ureg was going to sink the vessel, and the Ifrit showed himself and pleaded he didn't want to spend eternity at the bottom of the cold, dark, wet uh, Dragonmere Sea, especially being a, a being from the elemental plane of fire. So he offered the Orc captain three wishes if he would spare him. His first wish was to have a ship unmatched in its capabilities by any other vessel in the entire world. His second wish was to be able to raid anyone, anywhere, as sure as the rising sun steals the darkness from the night. And his third wish was that no man should ever be able to match his cunning and leadership as a captain on the seas. And that is how bards tell the origin story of the Beauty and Dawn, one of the most elusive and hunted pirate ships on the sea in history. For almost two decades under Captain Ureg, it raided and plundered almost every country attached to a body of water, anywhere. But all wishes have conditions, and as time passed, some of their afforded powers began to lose some of their effectiveness. For example, Ureg's first wish was to have a vessel unmatched in cap capability with any other vessel in the world. Well, well, it was. The Beauty of Dawn was indeed unmatched, but over time, Technologies advanced and countries started building bigger and better ships, and now she wasn't as untouchable as she once was. His second wish was to be able to raid anywhere, and that was key to the Dawn's elusiveness and baffling nature. I mean, this ability allowed the ship to create a slipstream in the magical weave that it could enter every night at twilight, and then it would emerge the following day. It's like a teleport anywhere on Faerun where there was a body of water. It would basically like emerge as like a phantom at the crest of the rising sun, giving the ship her namesake, the Beauty of Dawn. 
and that was still working just fine. Finally, Ureg's final wish, that no man would ever be able to match his cunning and leadership, was still the key to a lot of his victories. With speed, ruthless precision, and tactical prowess, his ship appeared like a ghost, overtaking all other vessels. His crew would rob them of valuables, conscript hardy crewmen into their ranks to replenish their losses, kill and mutilate the rest, and scuttle ships into Umberley's maw. However, the coastal city of Neverwinter had recently been allowing female captains into their ranks, and one in particular had soared up the ranks over the years to captain with a burning passion for only one thing in mind, revenge against a certain pirate. At the age of 14, Diana of Neverwinter had survived an encounter with the famous pirate Ureg and the Beauty of Dawn along the Sword Coast by mere chance alone. She watched her family yacht boarded, plundered, and then sunk. Her older brother was taken as a prisoner. Her younger sister and mother and father were left in the water like her for the sharks. The massive, hulking, larger-than-rife Ureg, with conspicuous tattoos across his arms and chest, laughed at their doomed plight and sailed away. One by one, Diana's family succumbed to exhaustion and sank beneath the waves. She would have drowned too, but an unusually friendly orca whale appeared and actually swam her for miles all the way to the coast and she survived. From that day on, she trained hard, vowed revenge, and her time had finally come. She's been captaining the Duchess for years now, one of the Neverwinter Navy's newest, fastest galleons, outfitted with black powder cannons from the Gnomes and Lantan, and a highly experienced crew who know how to use them. She would routinely sail the Duchess through the archipelago known as the Whalebones, looking for any sign of pirate activity. And then one midsummer's day, they came around a bluff and she couldn't believe her eyes, for right there near Beachhead was the Beauty of Dawn anchored, with half of her crew gathering supplies on shore. Hastily, the Duchess engaged and her cannon started screaming and belching iron. Captain Ureg raised his anchors and sailed away, stranding half of his crew behind on the island. And he skillfully navigated through the coral reefs of the, uh, of the shoals, thinking that maybe his pursuer would not have the ability, but Diana knew these waters very well and she was no, she was not impeded by the obstacle in the least, and the chase was on. For hours they matched speeds, until the wind started to die down. This would have been the end of the chase for any sailed power vessel, but the beauty of Dawn put on her oars, and despite being short crew, began to row, row, row the f out of there. See, the orc captain Urek knew that if he only kept his distance for another hour or so, the sun would set and he could use his magical slipstream to escape. The Duchess, however, was entirely dependent on wind to move, but Captain Diana was prepared for such a situation. She went to her quarters and brought out a magical fan, which she started using, which conjured a wind strong enough to fill the sails and propel the ship forward, closing the gap between their quarry. Once they were about 200 feet apart, both crews began to prepare for a skirmish on decks. One the Duchess would likely win with her numbers. The Beauty of Dawn had a ragamuffin of all sailors of different races and experiences captured and honed into the effective group they were, and almost all of them had been brainwashed by the magically enhanced tongue of the captain to work for him. Diana could smell the enemy crew, she could taste the sweet victory at hand, when just like that, the magic in the fan wore out and the sails went flat. It wouldn't be usable again until tomorrow, and the orc ship began expanding the distance between the two ships. The loud roar of brutish laughter by Captain Ureg filled the air, concophonied by the other uh, sailors on the deck of the Beauty of Dawn. He stared directly at his pursuer and cracked an arrogant smirk. Now every marksman has this one shot in their careers. A bowman splitting another arrow at a target range. A crossbowman severing a noose of a condemned soul with a bolt. Or a quick draw and fire of a pistol hitting a coin as it flips in the air. Now this was Diana's shot and she had to take it. She raised her pistol and pulled the trigger. The bullet flew 230 feet in an arc from vessel to vessel, aimed right at the captain and came down in exactly the right spot. It struck him critically at the base of the skull and the spine at the back of the neck, blowing out the front of his jaw and throat. Captain Ureg Groklang was dead. The crew of the Dawn broke into pandemonium at the last of their captain. They were preparing to fight, some were jumping overboard, others were surrendering, but there would be blood spilt, regardless, on both sides. And the first mate 
of the Beauty of Dawn, an orc named Samuel, was done with all of this death. He spoke both loud and firmly as the two ships got closer together, the cannons pointed at the doomed Beauty of Dawn. This first mate said, Listen to me. I was from Am. I was a fisherman when I was forced by this monster to do his dirty work. But he is dead, and I will do it no longer. Another voice of the crew says, I was, I was from Waterdeep. And another voice says, I was a farmer from Mordavia. You see, you got what you wanted. The captain is dead. We will all lay down our weapons and come willingly with you to stand judgment. But I trust this gesture of peace will allow you to spare our innocent lives. Captain Diana thought long and hard. She wanted to see every member of that crew drowned. But the more she thought about it, the more she imagined her brother being forced to work and potentially suffering a similar fate. Very well, she said, bring the dog's corpse aboard. I will dispatch my first officer and some guards and we will take you all to Neverwinter for trial. Let the law decide what shall become of you, she said. Once the pirate crew had been secured aboard the Beauty of Dawn, part of Diana's crew took control of the vessel and began to lead the Duchess home. Down below she came to inspect the corpse of the vicious orc. She thought that looking in the eyes of her family's murderer would bring her some absolution, but it only made her feel empty inside, like a part of her had died as well, leaving a large hole of reason to be where it had been. As her eyes wandered up and down the creature's body to her chest, she saw the tattoos that looked familiar to her from her childhood, but with one difference, they seemed to be blurry and melting. She ran her finger across the dead orc's chest, and her heart stopped when that same finger, now covered in wet ink, the tattoos on the corpse were fake. Gunfire echoed from above deck. Diana ran up the stairs to the bow of the ship to see gunfire in the distant twilight aboard the Beauty of Dawn, along with roars of orcish fury and splashes of crewmen being thrown into the ocean. A tricorn hat could barely be made out against the dark sky, eyes looking back to hers, locking just long enough for her to see the first mate opening the slipstream and taking the Beauty of Dawn through it with the portal closing behind them. A very strange, painful, confusing smile crossed Diana's lips. Ensign, set a course. For where, Captain? To the horizon, she said. Captain Ureg Gwilklang, the first mate. Alright, so what did you think of that episode of Ureg, the Orc Captain, aka the First Mate? Here he is, the bust for the shelf. It was a longer story, but there was a lot that I wanted to get in there. And perhaps if you're running a seafaring campaign, a villain like Ureg, the ship like the Beauty of Dawn, might be something perfect for you to just drop into your campaign. If you do, let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate it. Special thanks again to Alex over at Frog Lane Studio for painting that beautiful bust and sending it our way for Christmas. Much appreciated. And of course, next week, my Secret Santa gift going to Patchwork M will be the focus of the episode. And seeing as this is Christmas week, I hope you had a great Christmas with your family and friends. And next week will be New Year's. We'll be seeing you again at that time. Head on down to your friendly local gaming store, pick up some paints and a brush, get yourself miniature painting. It's a great hobby to get into. And for now, I guess I should go spend some more time with my family since it is the holidays. I'm GMA Tank. Watch your hands, people. <laughs>